Yeah, we're going to review a book today here on Global Connections with its author, Rupmati Kandakar. Uh, and the book is called Raging COVID Pandemic, The Wuhan Conspiracy Question Mark. <laughs> <laughs> the question mark is very important. <laughs> but welcome to the show, Rupmati. It's so nice to see you. Aloha, Jay. Um, many, many, uh, it's, it's just a pleasure again to see you, to meet you, and to talk about this book again. And you did not forget the question mark. So no, no, no. That's, that's awesome. No, I, have to, I have to give you a little background from our side. We, we made a movie last year, okay? And uh, we had eight scientists, uh, our faculty, we called them, from around the country. And the question was the connection between climate change and COVID. Uh, the name of the movie was uh, Spiraling Crisis, the Alarming Convergence of Climate Change and Pandemics. Um, and it was all about, you know, viruses. And it was all about how they, mm, how they find their way from the wild uh, into a population and kill 700,000 people, you know, at a time. Um, and we looked at uh, the question of what people were saying about the laboratory in Wuhan, just as you looked at it. So I am familiar with the issue, okay? And therefore, I would like you to tell us about this book. Tell us what you started off trying to find, what you what you did to find it, and what you ultimately concluded about the laboratory in Wuhan and the existence of a Wuhan conspiracy question mark. I, uh, it's it's now very becoming very clear, isn't it, Jay, that it is a virus which is not natural. The the book, which started with the uh, premise that it is not a naturally occurring uh, virus, it's not, it doesn't have a zoonotic origin, it has a lab origin. So that now holds true because we see unnatural mutations. We see, we are seeing an unnatural evolution. This virus is stronger than what we are giving to it. The antibody, uh, antibodies that we are trying to create through vaccines, the, uh, the, the innovations that we are making, it can escape it. Why? Because it's an interspecies uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, it's it's an interspecies virus. It's created between, uh, allegedly, between a pangolin and a bat genome sequence. That makes it stronger. When two, two, two you know, species unite, it creates a stronger being. So that's how this virus is so uh, dynamic, if you say so. And um, we, at the moment, do not have uh, the, the required vaccines. We have a preventive vaccine, Jay. We don't have an effective vaccine. That is the problem. We cannot relax on this, that we have a vaccine which is found the cure. We are having a vaccine which can prevent it, maybe save you from hospitalizations, maybe give, reduce the severity of the vaccine, of the virus. But can, have we still found a vaccine which can say that we have cured the virus? No. So that's why we cannot relax as yet. Now the origin is going further and further behind. Now we are looking at what are the effects, the side effects, and now you're going to have, um, uh, suppose now we are dealing with the Omicron virus uh, variant. If we had two mutations to deal with, two mutated viruses, what would we do? The world just now is imploding in every, every given opportunity. So we have to understand that this uh, pandemic, though now we, we have to relegate the origin to a little bit further, this and understand that now is the time to understand we don't want more mutations. We don't know how do we stop it? So that is the stage that we are. And it's a very unknown territory that we all are sitting in. Dangerous, uh, unknown and terrifying. So you have some slides um, yes. that you were going to present to us, uh, which I, I guess comes come out of your book or <clears throat> are a reflection of your, your, your methodology in the book. Can you can you present the slides? Yes. So now uh, we go through to uh, what was see there was the beta uh, the beta variant which came in and it was uh, the dominant variant in the beginning, but uh, the SARS-CoV-2 it was identified in Wuhan. 
But uh, the thing with it was that it was not the transmissibility, Jay. It was not that transmissible as the SARS-CoV-2 Omicron virus variant. Now the Omicron variant has this uh, particular variant of Omicron has got 50 mutations in the amino uh, protein area. Now this spike protein in technical terms is um, the spike protein mutation is the lock and key system by which the virus enters the human body and locks onto your protein receptor. That is how they can enter your body and escape your uh, immune system and attack you. So because our vaccines were uh, effective up to the Delta variant, now with the 50 new mutations of 18 on the amino acids and 43 on the entire spike protein area. So uh, technically, our vaccines, we don't know as yet. We will find this out after 14 days because our case, first case was reported on the 26th, 23rd. So we need 14 days from hence on to understand what will happen uh, to the mutated virus, how it will react, will it, uh, will it be effective against our vaccines? These spike mutations are new. So the vaccines that they have created are not effective against this. All the companies have said that they need 100 days to tweak their vaccine to be effective against the new uh, va uh, variant. But it took them two years to find something against the previous uh, Delta, uh, Delta variant, which was far less evolved. Now, this virus has gone to in, gone in, in its own system of evolution. You know, Darwin's theory has set in in a different uh, context over here. So it's coming up with new mutations. It's coming up with new spike uh, protein uh, variations. Mm. It's becoming more transmissible. Our, our plus point is that it could be detected with a PCR test. So that fact is... Uh, Establish that we can detect it through a PCR test. Now, how much is this transmissibility is a, a, a big uh, um, issue because it spread from 200 uh, some cases to around 2,000 cases in a, in a week. So, uh, and um, an important point to know in this is that it was in a country which was low vaccinated. Now, which we have these anti-vaxxers all over the world, they should understand that the spread of this vaccine, of this virus, started from a low vaccinated area. And it has spread to so many countries immediately. It was started from 1 to 2 to 14 to 28, and now it can go to the rest of the 200 plus countries. So we have to understand that this uh, variant is virulent. It, it is very, very dynamic and uh, effects are unknown. Detectable? Yes. Uh, effectiveness or the um, how much it's going to hurt the human race? We don't know. Until it hurts, will there be another mutation? We don't know that yet. So uh, now, right now, the best solution for everybody is to the international travel restrictions that were coming in, coming off after two years of traveling, of staying at, in your quarantine in your country, all these countries are still don't have any travel bans. They are, they are still opening up everything. They have to stop. They have to take this seriously because again, this spreads. We don't know where it's going to uh, uh, end. And um, another plus point for us, let's go optimism. Uh, it has mild fever. It doesn't have uh, severe effects as of yet. People are being cured just through hospitalizations in South Africa. There are no deaths as such reported from this virus, but that is all just, just it's very new. But we, if we have the experience of the beta and the delta, we have to understand that the severity can be in a smashing uh, uh, method. We saw in India last time, last show that we did, we saw India was cruising, surfing the wave of this. And suddenly in February, we got hit by the Delta virus. So uh, we need to understand that nothing can be taken uh, easily in this uh, pandemic because we have a mutating uh, lab origin 
virus. So that's why um, we have to be okay. careful about it. Well, a couple of, I have so many questions, if you don't mind, I, I like to ask you some of them anyway. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the possibilities that you raise in the book uh, to, to begin at the beginning is that there was um, no sign, no significant sign of, um, of COVID in the Wuhan area or anywhere in China <clears throat> until it popped out of that laboratory in Wuhan. And the, the question, the suggestion there, the implication is that that laboratory um, was engaged in weaponizing viruses. Is there any evidence that it was? Um. That's, that's the entire premise of the book, that uh, there is ample evidence that uh, the lab was in uh, uh, indulging in creating this virus. And J, it is, if a naturally occurring virus usually always fades out, this one is going higher and higher. It's giving you more mutations, it's becoming stronger, now we have to, the vaccines, preventive vaccines that we had, they're going to fall ineffective. Now you're going to need booster doses. What about the effect of booster doses on your health? Can you take three vaccines and um, wait for something to strike you? That vaccine is going to have an effect on you. So you have to understand that they have to find effective solutions for this. Even the vaccine on the other side, the vaccine industry has to find effective solutions to this. Till that time, there is no choice to the world except to follow COVID protocols. Social distancing, your mask has to be on. They can't be uh, half mask and they can't be, uh, you can't bump into people and that has to stop. It is reality of today that you have to social distance yourself. You have to follow COVID protocol. You have to, uh, you have to quarantine yourself if you're if infected. Try home remedies, go to the hospital, use that. Now, a plus point of this Omicron is that nobody has required the oxygen requirements as the previous uh, variant, Delta. So we don't have hospitalizations for oxygen. That was so basic. Jay, we were searching for oxygen in the uh, Delta virus. So we don't have that as yet. But nobody in the world can predict this path of this virus, how it will affect us what, what uh, uh, adverse effects it will have on our health and what is going to happen. We, we have so many complications of health. We have diabetic people, we have heart complications. We have, how is this virus going to affect these people is a different way from what happened in Delta. Any vaccine to be... Well, one thing that has struck me about this is that uh, Delta seems to have um, replaced, supplanted, the original COVID. Um, in other words, uh, before, you know, you saw COVID spreading around the world. And then next time you looked, it was Delta spreading around the world. And COVID itself seemed to have declined. In, 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 and, you know, I just wonder if that's the way the, these things work. And, and if that's so, do you think we might see Omicron um, displace uh, the Delta variant, is, is that the way these viruses can work? Is that the way they are working? Uh, yes, Jay, uh, you absolutely point on, because we started with the beta, uh, then the Delta. Delta had more transmissibility, but within two weeks, we have uh, the, uh, the Omicron virus covering the entire uh, um, no, reach of the Delta. In, as in South Africa. It is right now the most dominant strain in South Africa, the Omicron one, has displaced the Delta. So we have these three variants of the same SARS-CoV. SARS-CoV-2 has got the same genome sequence. So we, we call them as the variants of the um, SARS-CoV-2, but uh, this variant is now more transmissible. So it will, it's an evolved uh, species. Of evolved uh, variation of the previous one. So it is definitely going to, like you said, going to become the dominant uh, this. If, now there is a very, um, there's a very clear cut picture given by the WHO and uh, saying that if it becomes a mild variant that is dominant, we may see the end of the pandemic. 
Okay. Yeah, that was my next question to you. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like um, you know the, some of the uh, technology on uh, malaria and mosquitoes. You neutralize the mosquitoes, uh, yeah. you know, so that they don't reproduce. The mosquitoes die. They don't uh, spread the malaria, or whatever else they're spreading. Um, and then after a while, you don't have malaria anymore. So if you take, let's assume for this discussion that, uh, that Omicron, it may be very highly contagious, but it's less lethal. Okay? Yes. Uh, you, you implied that a minute ago. We don't know yet. And we're going to find out if it's as lethal or more lethal uh, than Delta. But let's assume for a moment it's highly contagious. We we can see that on the map you had, um, but it's less lethal in the numbers. <clears throat> okay, that suggests that if a <clears throat> if a high tech laboratory found a way to make a virus that would supplant a lethal virus with a not so lethal virus. Just as you said a minute ago, Rupmati, then we could replace a lethal virus with one that's not so lethal and thus end the pandemic. Is that what you're saying? Because that's a very provocative idea. That's hitting the nail on the head, isn't it? Uh, um, <laughs> because that is true, that is true. It has, uh, the, the pandemic will end if we have a milder dominant version, it's all over, it's milder. And that is the time that the technical uh, department of our global village has to get into action and find an effective vaccine against this virus. We have to find a vaccine. Once you take it, it stops. We can't have this preventive vaccine going on for um, our lifetimes. It has to be, and they have to get into mode, not tweaking the virus, tweaking the vaccine or booster doses, they have to get into picture to find a completely different uh, vaccination um, vaccine, which will be effective against this. They have to isolate the genome sequence. And, and uh, you, you see in, in cricket or in any sport, you predict, or in tennis, you predict what your opponent is going to do. They have to use that um, anticipation uh, to understand what your opponent might be doing. Maybe this might happen. Maybe this ha might happen. So they did not expect these 50 uh, mutations to happen in uh, the Delta, uh, in the Omicron virus but a variant. But we have a good chance now because this is a mild one. You just have a scratchy throat and severe exhaustion for any age. It's only these are the two symptoms that are identified in these. So we are at a better stage than the Delta one where you were gasping for oxygen. So we can take advantage of this situation and the department can get into action. Well, I, you know, you're talking about a technology that is far advanced about, you know, beyond the vaccines we developed in, over the past year, uh, which is, um, you know, I mean, on the one hand, we should be proud that we developed vaccines over the past year at all. Um, there was a crisis. It's less of a crisis. Well, the crisis is really a social political crisis, um, which I would like to talk to you about if we have time. Um, yes. But, um, you know, you, Im you implied a moment ago, though, that, uh, that if we are going to have um, a smarter vaccine, a vaccine that anticipates the moves of the virus, that would be something. And, and I suggest that we do have the technology to do that. We have the, uh, the vision to do it um, and we can do it, but it's not going to be short. It's not going to be six months or three months or a hundred days. It's going to be significantly longer to develop a vaccine that is so smart that it can anticipate the, vi the virus as it goes through evolution after mutation, after evolution. Um, so this means uh, that, yes, we can do it, but in the meantime, we're going to have to suffer. Suffer and uh, suffer and make it a way of your life. COVID protocol is a way of life. That's the only way they dealt with, the pa uh, with pandemics. That's the only way they dealt with viruses from the Spanish flu. From 1915, they're doing the same thing. So why should we be any different? Let's, uh, you know, you have to social distance, put your mask properly, sanitize your hands, uh, don't touch your nose, eyes, uh, 
eyes and lips. So you have to do these things. And uh, people who are getting frustrated with this, saying that it's been so long and now the pandemic has ended and it's all in your head. The virus is still mutating. We're still finding vaccines. So these things have to be accepted as a way of life. We can't. <laughs> One one thing you mentioned that I also I'm I'm swimming around in my head on this, you know we have been it has been suggested to us to all of us that if you have people who don't wear masks, if you have people that don't take any steps and and are anti-vaxxers and all that, and you have concentration of the virus in a, a given population, the the risk of mutation is that much greater. And, and I think you know, that that has a message that has been repeated over and over again. Um, but is that is that really is that really true? Um, because uh, what well, you know, um, so I mean, it only takes one viral particle to develop the fifty mutations. Um, why do I have to have a population of three hundred million people to develop? the 50 mutations, uh, it only takes one particle. Is it really a function of how many people are infected or is it something else? No, what you're saying is absolutely right. It started in a country where the vaccination rate is so low. So that says that vaccines are necessary, isn't it? Uh, only 28% of uh, uh, South Africa is vaccinated. So the mutations are much higher, like you said. 24 percent, uh, correct me, but uh, you know, 50 million, 50, uh, 50, 50 crore people in India are vaccinated with the first dose, and now uh, next four years they will vaccinate the entire country with two doses. Uh, America, 50 million people are vaccinated, so we have a significantly vaccinated uh, population. So we don't have the severity as we would have had if the people had population had not been vaccinated. So you know, you know, what comes to me it. on this is that is that the one particle that goes to 50 mutations is not in, in a vacuum. Uh, what's happening is the virus is mutating all the time into thousands of different kinds of mutations. Yes. And when the CDC says Omicron is a virus of of, of concern, it means that, well, there's thousands of them that are not of concern. Um, yeah, so, yes, yes. And you right. can't get to Omicron unless you've been through thousands and then bingo, out of those thousands, one of them turns, about, yeah. turns out to be, you know, worse and meaner and more lethal and infectious and so forth. So maybe there's something to say about having a population with a lot of disease because they are generating lots of mutations, most of which have no effect on us, but just a few come out of that. Yeah. Absolutely right. It's absolutely right, because uh, like we said, uh, it goes into, uh, if the virus enters a body, it mutates according, it, it acts in that way, and then it leaves or it dies or whatever. When it trans transfers from asymptomatic patients, it can go as a different version. So this is what we are talking about. It's a very uh, dynamic vaccine created in a lab. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, it certainly has taken a huge toll. I mean, it, it's, it's not a, naturally, naturally occur, occurring viruses, Jay. They always, always fade out. We don't have the Spanish flu still raging, but uh, two years, three years of modern life, we are still facing a crumpling uh, pandemic, which has just has halted the entire uh, system, global system. You have stock markets crashing. You have people not being able to go to work. You have work from home uh, cubicles uh, everywhere, you know. Uh, so that is brought it to a standstill. still. Now, unless this virus was uh, that, um, that evolving or that hurtful, we would not have had this situation. If it was a normal uh, disease, we could have had uh, a vaccine made if it was a... a virus which could not be effective, we would have had something like HIV or Ebola, 
you would have had preventive remedies for that. But as soon as we have oxygen therapy for the Delta variant, now we have an Omicron variant, which we do not know what are its effects or after effects in humans. So what it will ask for from us, we don't know. Now we are stocked up with oxygen concentrators, ventilator beds, uh, isolation. But now we don't know what is going to be the effect of this Omicron. And like you said, if it mutates into something different, it's going to have different effects and different remedies to ask for. So we have to just be prepared, prepared, prepared. No, that just seems like a problem because we, you know, we know it's in the toolkit. Masks are in the toolkit. Um, we have vaccines that, um, you know, that were pretty effective, at least at the outset, uh, to uh, the original COVID. Not so clear about the Delta and less clear about uh, Omicron and, and anything else that will follow because this continues to mutate until we get that smart vaccine you were talking about. Um, and so the question is, um, you know, uh, in a lot of a lot of uh, including Dr. Fauci, you know, are saying, well, just use what we've been recommending all this time. Just do the same thing. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure that there's really any evidence to support that notion. It could be that masks uh, maybe uh, don't make that much difference. It could be that the therapeutics that we have so far and a little pill, the, the morning after pill, <laughs> pardon me, uh, you know, it, it may not all be all that effective. So, I mean, I think the medical establishment is saying, well, do what we told you to do. And uh, we, are we have been trying to get you guys to do the vaccine for months. Now, this is just another reason. We can't tell you exactly what the medical analysis is, but we're telling you, you should take your vaccine finally now. Uh, I'm not sure that that is actually what's going to happen here. Um, you know, we may find that there's something else. We may find that um, that we have to move on and, as you said, figure out another kind of vaccine going forward. So it's really uh, shooting in the dark right now as to what we can do. But but it seems to me that taking the old vaccine is going to limit your exposure. Uh, it may not solve the problem, it may not stop the pandemic, but it will limit your personal exposure. Furthermore, it will limit the exposure of your family and the people you associate with. And so my question to you, and this is um, a political question, if you will, um, you know, what should the United States do? Right now, uh, the Republicans in, in the Senate are saying uh, they are not going to uh, fund the government as required on December 1st. Um, until Joe Biden stops forcing people to take vaccines, until he, uh, uh, until he stops funding vaccines from the federal government, which to me is uh, akin to madness. Um, but that's what they're saying. Um, they don't want to take any steps because, because, you know, freedom means not having to take the vaccine. But if I were president, or if you were the secretary general, I think we would both say, <laughs> I think we would both say, you got to take the vaccine. We're not kidding about this. It's not just for you. It's for all of us. It's for global humanity. What are your thoughts about that, Rumani? What would you do? No, it, it's such a dangerous precedent that they're setting in, isn't it? If they stop funding the vaccines. Now you can understand that this, virus, this Omicron variant has started in a country which is so minorly vaccinated. You need vaccination to prevent more mutations. That is the bottom line. You cannot, you cannot force a president. He is doing the right thing. He is doing the right thing. And it has to be mandatory to take your vaccine, vaccines uh, alongside your quarantine, your uh, uh, COVID protocol. You can't have riots and you can't equate personal liberty to this. Personal liberty is your right to expression, your right to write things, and your right to speak everything you want. Not to not take vaccines, because you not taking vaccine will um, endanger your family, like you said, your, your community and our village, our global village. So, and because it starts from one to eight billion, we have to understand that every person is responsible for this pandemic. Every time, every person is responsible for every mutation. You don't have to be uh, 
you don't have to understand you have to understand that you can't be unvaccinated and expect the government to come to your house and remove the virus from you you have to vaccinate yourself personal responsibility is much more important than personal liberty right now and you can't blame governments for things which are happening in your personal space unless you vaccinate yourself how can you tell the government pay for my health care exactly if you vaccinate, exactly. If you vaccinate, why should the government why should i as a constituent of the government pay for your health care when you are shooting yourself in the foot uh, let me let me go to one last point before we before we break, Rupati, and that is this, you know, however, this got organized in the Wuhan laboratory um, and whatever mistakes were made there, either on the weaponization end of things or on the uh, accidental release of the virus, you know, into the public, um, the, the Chinese have been very um, uh, draconian. Uh, that very disciplined about the virus now. One of our hosts uh, just spent a better part of seven weeks in, in uh, China. And he said the quarantine was 22 days long. He said, uh, if you violated any of the rules about you know, limiting infection, uh, the punishment was serious. And people really had no choice but to abide by whatever the protocols were because the Chinese government understands um, that if you want to stomp out, stamp out a, a pandemic, you have got to make everybody toe the line. And that goes to a political issue, doesn't it? Um, the Chinese do know how to get things done because it's a, an autocracy. Uh, in this great country of ours, uh, uh, what did de Tocqueville say? It's tumultuous. It's tumultuous in Congress. It's tumultuous with political parties and officials, and, and they can't seem to get their act together. And to a lesser extent, I would say in India, the same, the same thing. It's a democracy. And, and although the government can incentivize you and make requirements of you, it can't control you the same way that, that Xi Jinping can control you. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been the Z virus, you know, the, the Xi virus. The, Delta, uh, the Greek alphabet. But yes, democracy is being taken for granted in a huge way in, in, our, in our countries. You need to have um, a, a forced um, implementation of these uh, measures because right now China is so effectively able to control the virus in such a populated nation. India escaped lucky a little bit because we have, I don't know, got, uh, its immunity uh, which did not strike the population as was expected that it would just cause mass suffering. So it did not cause that as yet. But we have to understand that mandatory uh, restrictions in the US, you, they're equating this is becoming very meager, you know, Jay, the thinking has become very meager. Like you said, freedom in your expression, in your choices of life, everything, keep it. Keep it over there, limit it to that not in your vaccine protocols, not in things which will affect the personal liberty of somebody else. Let's go back right to our founding constitution and say that liberty is limited to that uh, space where it is your own, not when you uh, enter or endanger the liberty of another person. You have to respect the limit lines of freedom of the other person. You are not taking a vaccine, and giving me a, a variant which I I all I do not uh, deserve is wrong. So China, you know, is uh, these restrictive measures have helped the population. They have helped. So we can see a clear example where mandatory um, forced is used in a good way. Yeah. So you know, forcing by is wrong. You finished your book before uh, Omicron ever came out. Uh, even though your book is pretty fresh off the press. Um, uh, but in your book, you anticipated there would be an Omicron. You anticipated there would be uh, other mutations that would come our way. Um, and so, first of all, I, I think your book is very interesting. It, it's an academic study. Um, it's got a lot of data in it, and uh, it's very methodical. And I wonder, is it on, is it on um, Amazon? Yeah, it is on Amazon. And yeah. thank you so much for the review, Jay. Uh, appreciate it.
Well, I, I just uh, I want to ask uh, when the next book is coming out. The one that wraps around, uh, you know, these most recent develops in uh, Omicron and your thoughts about, uh, you know, the the fundament the fundamental approach of a more creative, a smarter uh, vaccine. That would be questioning the entire scientific community right now, isn't it? They they uh, to find an effective vaccine rather than a preventive vaccine, uh, but we can also go for preventive remedies, isn't it, Jay? We have this Ayurveda, we have, I, I told you this turmeric latte that we speak about, milk and turmeric, uh, it's immune for the immune system. So uh, go back to your home remedies. And uh, uh, I hope we can find some resolution, permanent lasting resolution for this uh, virus and um, a good idea for my book. So I yes. knew. <laughs> I can hardly <laughs> wait for your next book. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> let's plan to circle back uh, because this is this thing with um, Omicron is only starting and I know you're going to follow it. And uh, yes. even before that next book comes out, I would like to have a further discussion with your observations about how it is affecting not only the scientific community, not only this country, um, but the world. Uh, I, yes. I think we lost sight of that particular We, I mean, a lot of people in this country and certainly our government lost sight of the fact that everything is interdependent. And when you're talking about a global global crisis, a global pandemic, you're talking about everybody everywhere can never forget that. 